We just talked about this a few weeks ago on the show. Two NASA astronauts were supposed to be on an eight day mission abroad, the International Space Station, and they are now going to be stuck in space until February. Who's making that call home? Oh, hey, I'll be a little <laughs> late for dinner. A little. You may be wondering what lies ahead for these astronauts in the coming months. We are. Yeah, of course we are. Every so day. <laughs> joining us now to chat about this from the Moonshot Museum, we have Dr. Jamise Brown and Mike Hennessy. So glad to have you both here. Yes. Thank you. Great to be here. I, I think that we're all fascinated by this because, you know, it feels like we've seen so many movies lost in space, you know, mm -hmm. where they're just up there alone, but they're going to be okay. Yeah, right? yeah. they'll they be okay. There's other astronauts water, up there with them. Clean clothes. Exactly. Right? Yeah, they're on a space station <laughs> the size of a football field uh, uh, with uh, seven other astronauts from countries around the world. Uh, and they've got plenty to keep busy over the next few months. They're doing research in medicine, growing new plants uh, in space, um, studying our environment, even testing out new robots. You pointed to this because yes. this is your Lego creation of the ISS. Yes, yeah. it took me almost as long as it took to build the real I, I can imagine. <laughs> it was probably way more frustrating too. It was. <laughs> but I think that it's wow. important to remember, Cub, because I told you I'm a space nerd. Yeah. I think that it's easy to forget that they are in a compound that is only as long as a football field. That feels long to us. It is not to live in. <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, I think they're they're trained, you know, they're the yeah, best definitely. of the best. And so, you know, uh, it's while it's an unfortunate situation, they've prepared their whole lives for this. Um, and, you know, the communication um, to our knowledge with NASA has been great. And, you know, while they're up there waiting to return, they're going to be able to make some great advances um, for us to continue to make great strides in this, you know, aerospace industry. Uh, you know, yeah. I saw this really wonderful video just yesterday, actually, that kind of explained how this all works and that NASA has already contracted with other people to help with space missions. So, them get, catching a ride home from someone else is totally fine. This is kind of like a plan B that they already kind of had in place. Yeah, and I think that speaks to this new age that we're in of commercial space flight. Yeah. Uh, that's like lots of different airplanes at the terminal uh, that our astronauts are now waiting for. They're on a flight delay and they're waiting for the next available company, the next available spacecraft to bring them home. Yeah, yeah. grab a Starbucks like the rest of us do. <laughs> Take a nap. They're on the ISS. They don't have a uh, Starbucks. I, I, Not yet. This is sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, SUNY. I just, I would love a latte to get to you any day now. But you said Said that they're doing all of this research and all of these things. I'm trying to take this as a blessing in disguise now that they have their undevoted, unexpected time up there to kind of make these explorations. How does that affect maybe what you guys do at the Moonshot Museum? Because we have to be doing some really cool things up there. We're not just wasting time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that speaks to what Moonshot Museum's all about. There are a lot of heroes in space. Uh, like astronauts doing amazing research that benefits us on Earth, but there are a lot of heroes who never leave the ground. Uh, a whole support system of engineers and mission specialists um, that make a, a mission successful. Uh, and that's what Moonshot Museum is all about, are all of the careers and the way you can find your own place in space. Yeah. Yes. And that's one of the great parts about my job is really being able to take what's going on today and looking at what NASA is looking to do in the future and really be able to make sure that we're carving out exhibits and programs that speak to that. Dr. Brown, can you talk about how the Moonshot Museum came to be and, and what you guys are doing there? Yeah, so uh, the Moonshot Museum is, is really supposed to offer up a window into, you know, the, the space industry and also make it more accessible. Uh, you know, we know that, uh, you know, the aerospace industry hasn't always been as diverse um, as we would like it to be. And that's one of the uh, great things that we do at Moonshot Museum is to really make sure that people understand the different jobs that there are, whether you're an astronaut or an engineer or a graphic designer, you know, uh, has, as Mike has, you know, spoke to earlier, you can really find your place in space and use your talents and interests in the industry. I love it. And I think that so many, especially young people, I love seeing the pictures of young people in this, yeah. think um, if, if I can't be an astronaut, then there is no place for me. And I think that also comes from the movies that we've watched as well. But I think that we all need to remember that Mission Control, they are the most important people in yeah. this whole, in this whole <laughs> equation, and they never leave the Earth. Yeah. So how do you see your roles and what you do at Moonshot, kind of helping in this exploration and what's next in the industry. Yeah, so we uh, actually have a really great opportunity. We've gotten awarded an $800,000 grant by NASA to actually focus on the uh, cosmic career. So, you know, we're really uh, helping students uh, develop their hard skills and their soft skills uh, when it comes to the aerospace industry. And Mike uh, is so amazing that he actually uh, gets to help craft some of the specifics of those programs, which is really great, which involves yeah. VR interactions that are coming cool. soon in a mobile planetarium. So we really want to give kids a hands-on experience. 
science with That's that. So, that would be really neat to have a mobile planetarium. Mike, what do you think about all of this with the astronauts up there? Um, I think, well, A, I think I have the most fun job in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because for us, it's about um, students coming and taking this field trip to the future. Yeah. Uh, our future on the moon, but also the future they can have right here in Pittsburgh in the mm -hmm. space industry, seeing real spaceships under construction. Look at this seeing themselves uh, maybe one day on the other side of the glass building those spacecraft. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think with our astronauts in space right now, um, you know, it, it speaks to how much there is left to discover. We have experimental right. spaceships that we're trying. Sometimes things go wrong. Right. Uh, that's life, but you make the best of it. And I think uh, Butch and Sonny are both um, excellently positioned to do a lot of great research yeah. that we can only do in space that makes the rest of our lives better here on Earth. Oh, I also amazing. love that whether or not it's an extreme precaution or like a real one that they're taking by not sending them back home on the same spaceship that you're kind of like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm glad you got my back. Yeah, like yeah exactly. We're thing. good here. Cool. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. And Thank you. You got to check out the Moonshot Museum. This is yeah. so neat. Thank oh, you. So Please cool. do. Only place in the world you can see a real spacecraft being built in real time. So oh, how fun. Really neat. Oh, I'm ready. For more information on the Moonshot Museum and their programs, you can head to our website, kdk.com slash talkpittsburgh.